Hello, good morning. It's very early here in California. And welcome to Only Lovers Book Club bonus episode uh, for July. We usually read a romance together as a book club. We take turns, we discuss it. But sometimes in between those things, I'll convince Andrea to read a romance book with me or watch a show or watch a movie. And then we sit down and we have like a very like super chill conversation about it. So if you've followed book club for a while, you know that we are no strangers to Adriana Herrera. We've read a lot of her books. Um, we read one about one of the three kings or the three wise men. We've read um, a contemporary recently called On the Hustle. And we read a historical one. Uh, and we called, also read Mangoes and Mistletoe, like not for book club, but you and I both read that one too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it's it's like Adriana again. And uh, I'm sorry to say <laughs> yes, again, honestly. And I'm not sorry about that. I do think that like, this is not the end of our journey with, with Adriana <laughs> Herrera. So, so be it, just buckle up. If you don't like it, skip it. But if you do, make sure to like the video, make sure to leave us a review if you're listening to audio. Today, Andrea and I are gonna be talking about An Island Princess Starts a Scandal. And this is the second book, right? In the, I for, I don't know what this series is called. Las is Leonas. A, Las Leonas, right? So we read A Caribbean Heiress in Paris together as a book club. Andrea and I are continuing reading the Leona series together. And we were just kind of talking before uh, I introduced us about like what the next one is going to be about. So yeah, um, before we kind of like get into it, let's disc let's say what we're, what our backgrounds are, because I feel like both of us are like in cozy morning slash mid afternoon vibes. I say it's early in California, but it's 10 o'clock. It's not early for me. <laughs> it's early for me. Um, but yeah, so um, I don't have a fancy background on. It's just my blurred living room, but I put on a little pride, little pride filter from Google Meets, and it gave me a little pride heart on one of my cheeks. My background is blurry, but I think it's kind of like rosy colored or rainbow colored. But that's pretty much it. That's the effort that went into it today. Uh, yesterday, we recorded our other book club, so we're just taking it easy. Drea, what you got going on in your background? I have the picture from Need to Read's account on Instagram, which if you aren't following, you should, uh, because it's like beautiful mouth-watering desserts all match to whatever book she's reading. And for Island Princess, she made these like oyster-shaped... I always say the word wrong. You say it. Macarons. Yes. And they are pink and they've got the little pearl inside. <laughs> and they're just the cutest, most sapphic little dessert I've ever seen. So I'm using that picture from her Instagram as my background. And then I have the remains of my <laughs> hairstyle from last night's book club, which involved a lot of gel that I need to wash off. <laughs> <laughs> I did not last. It night. still looks good. The volume, it's like there, you know? Yeah, no, no. The volume is, is something's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks good. I am a fan. Yeah. So, that tussled, I have my, um... tussled look. Very romantic. Very appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have my glasses because I'm supposed to be working on the computer today. Um, it's not going great, but <laughs> glasses are my attempt. That's okay. And then my favorite blanket, which is pink and rosy and matches the cover. And also it has possums. I mean, it's a vibe over there. It's, it's a vibe <laughs> over there on your side. I forgot to mention as well. I think you gave me this, right, Drea? Did you give me this cup? What cup? Oh, yeah. I gave you that cup. I'm also drinking my coffee out of one of my favorite mugs. It's a coffee mug with a lot of uh, different fruit on it and um they all have vulvas there's one random banana that's a little bit split open um but yeah it's a lot of little i mean which tracks late yeah no it tracks it's <laughs> um lady bits let's let's say um so yeah very lots of sapphic energy uh and cozy energy in this bonus episode so let me read you a little bit about what island princess starts a scandal is about i don't want to read adriana's bio because we've read it like five times it's the same thing. Go look it up. Do your own homework. Exactly. But I'll read. I'll read you the description, <laughs> and then we can talk about how we felt. A note about how I'm going to pronounce these names. I haven't listened to the audiobook. I'm sure that would be very helpful. Um, but as a Spanish speaker, I want to just put 
like acentos on certain things. And I feel like I've heard these last names in real life and in soap operas before. I'm just going to say them that way, but there might be another way that there, there just might be variations of how you pronounce this. So if I'm pronouncing this wrong, Ms. Herrera, please forgive me. Like I'm doing it with all the best intentions. Okay, here we go. One last summer. For Manuela del Carmen Cáceres Galván, the invitation to show her paintings at the 1889 exposition, Exposición Universal <laughs> came at the perfect time. Soon to be trapped in a loveless marriage, Manuela has given herself one last summer of freedom in Paris with her two best friends. One scandalous encounter. Cora Kempf Bristol, Duchess of Sundridge, is known for her ruthlessness in business. It's not money she chases, but power. When she sees the opportunity to secure her position among her rivals, she does not hesitate. How difficult could it be to convince the mercurial Miss Cáceres Galván to part with a parcel of land she swore never to sell? One life-changing bargain. Tempted by Cora's offer, Manuela proposes a trade, her beloved land for a summer with the Duchess in her cor corner of Paris, a taste of the wild, carefree world that will soon be out of her reach. What follows thrills and terrifies Cora, igniting desires the Duchess long thought dead. As they fill their days indulging in a shared passion for the arts and the nights with dark and delicious deeds, the happiness that seemed impossible moves within reach though claiming it could cause the greatest scandal Paris has seen in decades. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> My gosh, the description is over the top. <laughs> I'm into it. That's what I read. Did you read that? Yes. You read this absolutely. a minute ago, though, right? You read it, like, like in June. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, June or May, honestly. <laughs> I know I you because you know what I think that was my first pool read and my pool opened like the last week in May so it's very mm. possible that I read it in May it was it was a while ago <laughs> the description pretty much captures everything that you need to know though so I feel like yeah. I it even I read it recently and it jogged my memory I'm like all oh, right that's right you know <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, what did you think? How does this compare? We loved Caribbean Heiress in Paris. We gave it a lot of awards in our yearly wrap up, our Only Lovers Awards that you can check out. Um, so how did you think this held up to that first book? Did it meet your expectations? Give me your thoughts. Um, <laughs> I'm looking back at what I posted on Instagram. <laughs> and on Instagram, I said I liked it more than a Caribbean Heiress. Yeah. So yeah i and I, I think i i think i stand by this um my reasoning being that a it's sapphic and b that it revolves around the art world instead of the liquor world because i'm not a drinker um and yeah i know there's like mocktails and stuff but like i'm not it, it, i'm just not interested like in that world at all so i was much more interested in all of these like painters and sculptors and like creatives making a living um than I was in like the whiskey and the rum business. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a really fun, quick read. I thought the scenes were super sexy. I think both books do that really well. Um, I think I've actually found these historical fiction, like this series, sexy scenes, sexier than the other Adriana Herrera books we've read, like the contemporaries and stuff. Um, so yeah, I've I've been into both books. I think I, this one's my favorite so far, but I really enjoyed reading it. I I don't I don't have any like big complaints or anything, honestly. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I always worry, right? When you read like when we read a series or when I read a series, I always hope that the next books kind of like you know continue with the the same vibe, the same uh, mm -hmm. level of engagement, like emotional engagement, right? That I that I'm looking for. Um, and this this definitely delivered. I thought it was a very breezy read. I don't know that I love it more than Caribbean Heiress, but they are like right next to each other. Do you know what I mean? Like I love these two books equally, but for very different reasons because I love the setup of Caribbean Heiress in Paris. I'm not much of a drinker, but I just so happen to have been reading or had read a book about women in the liquor business like 
drinking alcohol, making alcohol. I think it's called Girly Drinks by Mallory O'Meara. Excellent, like excellent, like paired reading, I'll be honest. Um, and I just, I loved Luz Arana and I liked, and I didn't hate the male protagonist. <laughs> I thought their chemistry you, was- You really liked that one scene too, with the, with the gun. <laughs> with the pistol, uh, when he discovers the pistol on her thigh. It just had a lot of really great, really great moments. And An Island Princess also has like really great, like iconic moments. Um, I like that they happens. It's a, it's a story that happens, I guess, concurrently to the events of the of the first book which is which is different i feel like right we've we have talked about this that it's like usually picks up when the other book kind of like leaves off and so you're you feel like you're almost done with the other characters and you don't really hear from them again except for a couple of cameos whereas these events are happening almost around the same time and so you kind of see an overlap and that's cool. It's like, ooh, it's like a cool like insider. I don't feel like if I hadn't read Caribbean Heiress, I would not have understood it. I feel like it was simple enough, but like satisfying enough that because I read the first book, I got it. Um, and I just love the sexy scenes in this too. I do wish that there had been, <laughs> I do wish that there had been more. I wish that there had been more. I understand why, because there's like a slow and steady buildup of, of, of that. I kind of feel like we get a lot of sexy scenes with Manuela receiving pleasure. Uh, and I kind of felt like I didn't get a lot of like Cora, Cora, like letting loose and like receiving pleasure. Like that would be my only like little, little tiny tidbit. It's not that it didn't happen. I just wanted more. <laughs> I just wanted more. I wanted them to be like crazy into each other in bed on screen a little bit more <laughs> you wanted you wanted like uh the santa's night vibes yeah <laughs> yeah and i and, and i think that because i like it when you know i like that there's like an alternating alternating kind of what do you go an alternating point of view right we go from manuelas to coras uh and so on and so forth and i actually like it when a sex scene starts in a point of view of one character and then ends in another one and i think that would have been really fun i think that would have been like because um manuela is not like as experienced right as cora this is going to be like her first really like full sexual intimate experience with another woman i think she's kissed somebody else uh at the start of the book and cora has had lovers you know she's had many lovers she like visits brothels you know it's not like she's a stranger to the the art of the flesh and so i really would have liked to see a little bit more maybe like cora like not teaching her but like introducing her to like many more things that um maybe she hadn't thought of or hadn't encountered or had been wanting to try um there's a book that's called The Keeping of like Waspish Widows, I think. And that book does a really like sexy hot job of like, have you ever used a dildo before? And I was like, <gasps> I was like blushing when I read it. And I kind of wanted that level of like, let me show you the ways. Like you think, you know, you think this is good. Wait until I, wait until I pull out my bag of tricks. But so both of the books in these, series have had like very um not like real life kind of setups right like like arrange like fake marriages are always like a thing in books but like i've never met someone in like a fake marriage to get money or something in real life i'm sure there's some people out there but i just don't you know and they especially don't fall in love with each other if, if they are doing it and so this book has like a similar thing where it's like I'll sell you my land, but you've got to give me like an erotic tour for a month. And I loved it. <laughs> uh, but I was curious what you thought of like their deal there. Like, did you buy it? Did, you know, did it make sense that she would agree to do that with her precious land? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I really love that setup because I really like Manuela. I really like her as a character. I felt like Luz Alana was under similar pressures. But I feel like her internal turmoil was, I mean, it wasn't as relatable to me, to be honest. <laughs> I, as a queer person, I just can't relate, you know? <laughs> um, whereas I think that uh, Manuela had a lot of stuff going on, both like 
you know, like identity wise and responsibility wise, like to her family. And uh, and then also just her personality, jumping into things without, I don't, I wouldn't say like jumping into things without thinking, but, you know, definitely just kind of like jumping in feet first. Mm -hmm. like, okay, whatever. I've made my choice. Now I'm going to do my best and do everything I can in order to follow through with this decision that I've made because my word is important, you know, and I want to feel like I, I did my best. Uh, I could definitely relate to that. And so it made perfect sense to me that she would try this. And I also like the way that Cora was trying to make it circumvent it to be like the most boring time possible. Um, and I liked how Manuela kind of wiggled out of that and like forced Cora to, to like chase after her. That was so satisfying. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, because it's the kind of situation where I feel like we've all tried something like that in real life, right? Where you like do something that you hope is going to provoke the kind of reaction you want. Um, and at least in my experience, it often didn't work. <laughs> you know, like I would try my best to get this reaction. The reaction didn't come. So, yeah, I found it very satisfying in the book that she like played right into her hands and, you know, drove to this party <laughs> in like a fit. I, I, I love that for Manuela. I would have been really sad if it didn't work out. I also like that she wasn't like rude or anything. You know what I mean? She was... Yeah, when she Cora's was just like, I mean, it is what it, honestly, if it hadn't worked, like she would have been disappointed, but she would have still had a good time at the party. <laughs> I think so too. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, here's the thing like, maybe I'm just like a really boring person, but all the stuff that Cora was taking her to, I'm like, oh, that sounds fascinating. <laughs> but that's just me, right? Manuela's like looking to party. And so, you know, since she's not getting that party situation, party slash like have sex. Yeah, like, have like a lot of sex. <laughs> <laughs> that is what she wants. <laughs> and Cora's like, no, nah, no, nah, um, I'm gonna put this off as much as possible because if anyone's gonna be having sex with you, it should be me. But I don't think I should be having sex with you because we have this economic yeah. arrangement. And that's also one of the reasons why I wanted more like explosive, sexy times is because. It took us so long to get there. It took us so long to get there. Tell me how you felt about their first encounter when they meet at the brothel. Did you like I that? Thought, yeah, I thought that was so cute. <laughs> because, you know, I'm not always great at, like, visualizing things when I'm reading them. I'm not the kind of person who has, like, a, a picture painted in their head, you know. But I definitely could see that scene in my head. <laughs> Um, and I love the idea of Cora just walking in and this like <laughs> flighty little thing is like on a chair <laughs> trying to like look at this like like super presenta, you know, <laughs> like not even like thinking that she's trespassing in someone's room. Um, I love that. I thought it was super cute. I thought it was a great way to immediately from the get-go set up that they were both physically attracted to each other but also that they clearly had mutual interests you know that because i think if, if they had met just like randomly having a drink you know at a party or something they wouldn't have known that right away it would have been like purely physical so i think this allowed us to be like oh they connect over art and like they're intellectuals, but also they want to fuck. A hundred percent. I mean, why wouldn't they? I love that they kissed in that scene. I love that the kiss happened. And I, I think it's a great setup for then when they meet again, when it's like, oh, I have a meeting with this person. And yeah, because in real life, like you would have been thinking about this person like mm -hmm. forever after that. You know what I mean? Like that felt so true to life. Like both of them were like, oh, my God, I think encuentro. <laughs> And then, like, what are the chances? I loved it. I love that setup. <laughs> yeah. Um, who did I picture from? I, I pictured the actress from Gentleman Jack, even though she's not Latina at all. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely picture that. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously a different era, different time, different place, different era. But, like, this is who I pictured. Like, she encapsulated kind of like that business, just business woman through and through. Everything is, like, super business, super important. And, um... That's what I was picturing. And I there are moments when, you know, when she like softens and 
and you know it just was <laughs> you so know, good okay you, well then we're talking about casting you know who i would picture again like not necessarily like <laughs> racially but you know who i would picture for manuela is like <laughs> like young Catherine Zeta Jones, like like Zorro Catherine oh. Zeta Jones. <laughs> okay, I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I just feel like because there was just something about her character that was like so alluring to Cora. You know what I mean? Like and I feel like Catherine has that like same vibe. Yes. Where it's like yeah. <laughs> agree. 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 Nah, now I want to watch Zorro again. <laughs> <laughs> like, do they imagine Catherine? You walk into your room and Catherine Zeta Jones is like in a in a beautiful dress on a chair, like looking at your painting. I'll say hello. Yeah, I can picture the scene. I like our casting. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not mad at it at all. Like, I like the the actress from Gentleman Jack. The vibes, right? Mm -hmm. And and she's got dark hair, so yeah. I think it works because um, Adriana and I had shared like some sort of fan art or some art that was made for the books. Oh yeah, um, I think I saw that. And they're super cute. And I'm like, oh, great. That's exactly who I was picturing. Mm -hmm. Like, or the, the vibe that I was going for. So I'm not mad at that. So, yeah. Um, I also thought it was cool that um, part of Cora's, like, stuffiness is because she'd been, like, hurt before. And she'd been, like, scandal. She'd been involved in a scandal before. And I guess was, like, really traumatized by that. Did you have mm -hmm. any thoughts about that? Like, did did the scandal part, were you worried about scandals at all? as you were reading this. No, I, I, felt, I felt like it was very believable because it was like two separate things, right? It was not just the scandal like in public, but like the personal humiliation of like you liking someone and finding out that it was fake and they were just using you for money, you know? So it was like, it was like an outward scandal, but it was also like a scandal in her heart. Like she truly could not believe that she had been so bamboozled. Um, so that felt like really believable baggage to me that she would carry around with her. Um, and then also like the son thing like really made sense to me that she's like, mira, like my husband did so many things for me and like, I'm so sorry that my actions have caused any negativity for you. And like, now I'm like committed to making it up to this kid and, and making for like a triumphant return. So like those seemed like very, logical you know suitcases that she's like dragging around behind her and that would interfere with her wanting to you know just do whatever she wants with Manuela like I didn't think they were illogical I didn't think they were unreasonable like if I had been through those things I would have probably been making the same decisions as her right that's what I really liked about it because it felt very reasonable to be worried mm -hmm. about this whereas like I feel like sometimes it's like oh my reputation I'm like oh fuck it like who fucking cares I mean and yeah. obviously different time periods like your reputation like now versus uh, people worry about different things at yeah, different times yeah. but I felt like yeah if someone had burned me that fucking bad I I mean I still am that way <laughs> yeah. if someone had burned or someone has burned me that bad I would be very hesitant to jump into something that was kind of like awake awakening the same like yeah no, and, and not only that but then you even have like the situation of like Manuela doesn't live in Paris she's not single and unattached you know what I mean like she literally promised to a man she's only here temporarily like if it, it's screaming I'm gonna break your fucking heart <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? so like she's got red flags all over her yeah um Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. It, yeah, I do like that in the story, Manuela is able to independize, you know? Yeah. She's got all these things that she wants to try to do, but she also feels like she's got these duties to her parents who don't deserve don't deserve her, to be honest. Um and I did like that speaking of scandals in like the most scandalous of moments when Cora says, "Fuck it." you know, I'm going to go get her or I'm going to go do whatever. She like shoots it down. Right. And I, I was really proud of Manuela. I felt bad for Cora because I'm like, yeah, hey, I would turn to dust, you know, but there were times when I don't remember. I don't, I think she goes to her like twice, right? She goes yeah, to try to stop the marriage. <laughs> She's like, yeah. let me buy your daughter. <laughs> yeah. She goes to try to stop the marriage from happening with her finances. And then she goes and does a public display and 
and tries to stop the wedding. Like, if if um if anyone here you know disagrees with this, uh, speak now or forever hold your truth. And Cora's like, stop the fucking wedding. And th- even then, she's like, no, like that's not what I want from you. And I was like, hell to the fuck yeah! Like I obviously was like really devastated for Cora, but I was so crazy proud of Manuela. And I really liked that the book gave her a chance to like find herself, figure out what she wanted. And even though she wanted to be with Cora, I like that she was given the opportunity to do it on her own terms. And I feel like in historical romance novels, I feel like main characters or female characters, I feel like there's only so many options that you've got, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so like, if you have someone who who you care about, who cares about you, who can offer you financial and social stability, then you would just jump at I mean, it, right? I mean, fuck historical, like even right now. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm talking about like, yeah, you know, but I mean. Yeah, I, no, I, I get what you mean. And I'm glad that, um, you know, because we're presented with this wonderful group of artists who are, independent and making it on their own you know they've made sacrifices but they're like doing what they want to do and so it was really nice to see that come like full circle and and for us to see her be able to to be part of that too and not just like Cora saved me and now I can do my art it was like no I found a way to do my art and then I got together with Cora Yes, I think that I like that she was able to put herself first because what Mm -hmm. I anticipated, right, like you're reading and you're anticipating is I thought that she was going to get together with Cora and then Cora would help facilitate Mm -hmm. her art life. Uh, And I like that she was able to do that first. It was very satisfying. Mm -hmm. And I do like how it humbled Cora and changed the way that she approached how she felt powerful in her life too. That was like very moving. It was mm-hmm. really moving. Like I said, I really liked both of these books like in the series um, and I liked them for different reasons. I feel like the first one was very passionate and very satisfying in a fun, rompy kind of way. And this one starts off that way and then you really get to... It gets deep. It gets deep and you get to really appreciate what both of the characters, where they are when they meet each other like, and where they end up when they get back together again. Yeah, I think now that you say it, like in the first book, I think we we see that kind of like inner growth and transformation more from, I forget his name, but you know, the love interest. Evan. Yeah, because he has to kind of grapple with the whole, like my father is this man and he's done this and what do I want with my life and my money and my heritage and all of these things. Whereas Luz Alana, not to say that she doesn't grow in other ways, but she doesn't have such like a massive thing that she has to like confront. Whereas in this book, it's like both of them have really big arcs, right. <laughs> like inner arcs. Yeah, Luz Alana's hurdle was more like external. She wanted exactly. to assert herself as a businesswoman, a businesswoman, mm-hmm. you know, like she she wanted to be taken seriously. She wanted to, do you know what I mean? She wanted to prove herself. Uh, yeah. And in order to prove herself, she needed to, it was something that is external. She needed mm-hmm. to get the respect of people and she needed Evan's financial backing and, and marriage security in order mm-hmm. to make all of that happen. Not to say that her journey wasn't as important, but it definitely wasn't as introspective yeah, as yeah. Manuela's. And so um, my, that's I just felt so like, at the end of the book, I was like, fuck yeah. Like it felt so good. Uh, two different vibes, but but I really liked it, so. I'm like thinking of like our casting and I'm like, I don't know, we just circle back to like Xander and Yoli. Like- <laughs> <laughs> because they could have absolutely been these people too. No. Who's oh wait, who so who is who well, Zan- Xander would be Cora. Right. And, and then, then Yoli um, would be Manuela. Like physically. I'm not saying like personality wise necessarily, but just I can see it. Okay, well, that about wraps up our discussion of an island princess start a scandal. This bonus episode, we'll just keep it nice and short. If you want a longer episode discussing historical romance, check out our Caribbean Heiress in Paris and many of the other books that we've read. I think Tashai is the one that picks the most historical stuff. But I mean, we did read Reputation last year. We read we read a couple of them. Look through our playlists and you'll find something there. But yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. We've got um, some dark, not dark, it's not dark. It's like a paranormal 
romance by a coming up in august and then we'll see what we do for a bonus episode if we decide to have one but yeah until next time take care bye thank you for making it to the end of this scandalous bonus episode thanks for spending that little bit of time with us make sure to like the video or leave us a comment and if you're listening don't forget to leave us a review tell us how much you love this series too you can support Only Lovers Book Club by subscribing to our shows and sharing our episodes. It's really helpful. I mean it. More the merrier. You can also drop some change into our tip jar if you have any spare change in this economy. Or you can buy the books that you like us talking about. Buy them from our bookshop. All of those links are in the description. You can find us on Instagram at Only Lovers Book Club.